What is food to you? If it's pleasure, it's easy to make the wrong decisions. If you're thinking of it in terms of health, fitness, and definitely performance, then it's easy to make the right decisions. It's like, is that good for me? No. Should I be eating that? No. Should I be, I've got to eat the right foods in order for my body to operate as high performance as possible. Okay, what do I eat in a day and why I'm so aggressive when it comes to mentality to food, even more than what you're actually eating. So every day looks pretty much the same, whether it's recovery run, easy run, bike day, it all looks the same. The only way it changes is if I've got a hard session and it's an interval session or a long run and I wanna fuel that in the same way that I'm gonna be racing because I want my stomach on race day to not have any surprises. I don't want it to be shocked so I can perform at my best. So I'm teaching my stomach to take in the breakfast that I'm gonna be taking in by doing that repetitively on the interval day and on the long run. So it's getting used to fast running, it's getting used to long running with some faster segments. The rest of the days look pretty much the same. I reward myself for getting out there and doing it. So the kit's laid out the night before, get to my kit, I hydrate, and then I get out the door. That first hour and a half to two hours of the day is completely fasted. And so I'm tapping in, I'm building like a fat metabolism or fat burning machine. So I'm able to tap into fat as opposed to glycogen as a primary fuel source. And that helps you take in less than you actually need um, or less than you usually usually feel like to require to run a marathon. And so it keeps your stomach in check. And then I reward myself with, I really, like, I, I really look forward to it. And this is the key point of this video. I really look forward to my first breakfast. I have two breakfasts every day. First one is a banana smoothie. So five bananas with almond milk and some water and uh, pea protein. So unflavored pea protein. Not even, not even pea protein, but chocolate flavor or strawberry flavor, vanilla, cookie creams, none of that exists in my world. It's just why, if you're adding flavor to something, you're on, you have the wrong mentality. Like, I, when I look forward to banana flavoring, flavored smoothie, it's because the bananas are adding the flavor. And so those, those are helping me recover, but also building fuel for the next sessions. Simple as that, I look forward to it. Um, I don't overcomplicate it. Sometimes it's got seeds in, and you're looking after your omegas, stuff like that, if you've got the grinder in place but it's just consistent on a daily basis. And having those consistent meals that you know you're going to, it's not a case of, oh, what should I have for breakfast? Oh, I really fancy it. No, it's just, that's, that's what's happening. It's not a case of there's choices available. That's what's happening. That's your first meal and you'll know it because, and then it's so easy to build that into a habit and it's then so difficult to divert. And it, so that's the first breakfast and that's about 800 calories. So it's calorific, but it's easy to metabolize. So you get it to the right places very, very quickly. The second breakfast is about an hour and a half after that. And that is just oats in water, cooked oats in water. Very, very simple, 100 grams of dried weight. So the, the key here is looking forward to something as simple as oats mixed with water and looking forward to that and thinking, oh, this is brilliant. And it's part of your day. I have to do the smoothie and then I have to do the porridge. And this is recovery, but it's also fuel. And it's that thinking of what is food to you? If it's pleasure, it's easy to make the wrong decisions. If you're thinking of it in terms of health, fitness, and definitely performance, then it's easy to make the right decisions. It's like, is that good for me? No. Should I be eating that? No. Should I be, I've got to eat the right foods in order for my body to operate as high performance as possible. And so looking forward to something as simple as oats in water, not thinking, oh, I need to make this taste good by adding some flavor, or adding some nuts, seeds, berries, um, which are not the worst thing in the world. It's just the mindset of how can we enjoy something as simple as oats mixed in water? Exactly the same with the protein powder. If you then need to start, okay, have we got cookies and cream flavor? Or have we got strawberry flavor or vanilla? It's the wrong, you're on the wrong path to the wrong type of thinking. If it works for you initially, great, but be the monk. And that's you know, why my friends make fun of me because they know that it's not, they don't even ask me anymore. Do you want a beer? Of course not, no. I, I, those things are not available to me. So alcohol is not available to me. Chocolate is not available. If I do have chocolate, it's literally 85% chocolate and you know a couple of pieces and that's fine. And from time to time, but most of the time it's not there because I don't want to remind myself of how good these things taste. Like alcohol is great fun, but does it serve you? Does it serve you whether you're trying to do really well in your sport, whether you're trying to get better in your life in general, whether you're trying to get better at work, probably say that alcohol doesn't 
doesn't serve you. And so it's not available to me. The same with sugary drinks, whether it's Coca-Cola or Lucozade or um, anything like that that is literally water with sugar. It serves a purpose during the runs, before the runs, after the runs, if it's something like Morton, and it's literally doing the job that it's supposed to be. So it's got the electrolytes mixed in with the right level of and type of carbohydrate and trying to get me faster, then it serves a purpose. But the key here is making simple things the rewards and really looking forward to it. Like I, maybe once or twice a week, if the watermelon looks really good in the shop, I'll get watermelon. And I literally, I love eating it. It's crunchy, it's fresh, it's cold. You think this is, it's wonderful and it came from the ground. And you know, I'm not thinking calories, I'm not thinking, I, I know it's obviously low calories, but I'm not thinking that because it's just so pure and so fresh. And so it, again, it's that level of pleasure that you get from something or what is it actually serving? Like in that case, it's, it literally is a reward. And that watermelon is a reward. So I don't need a packet of crisps or a, a chocolate bar in order to reward myself. I used to, maybe seven years ago, think, okay, if I, it, even though I'm like the monk, I really love granola. And when, when it's got the chocolate bits and stuff like that. And then after a while, I was like, why am I, why am I eating ch chocolate granola? Which if you look on the back of the, of the cereal package, it's just full of sugar and full of e-numbers and full of junk. It is not serving you. So just pretend that it doesn't exist. And what that does by having those first couple of breakfasts, and then if I've got other training, and if it's weight training, et cetera, and I'm trying to prepare my body to lift some weights later on in the evening or do a double session, whatever it might be, then I'm having another smoothie. And sometimes they even have a third smoothie. But what it does, having that morning and having that morning routine, and pretty much it's happening every day in that order or there or thereabouts. If it, again, as I said, interval day and long run day are slightly different, but it's pretty much the same. Then what it does is frees you up for the evening. So mostly that will be home cooked food. So in a moment, sort of my rotations are like a pumpkin soup. Um, Borscht, which is basically vegetables, it's like stew from back home in the UK, but vegetables and the vegan version of, of kind of a stew, so a borscht, a Russian meal, um, or a, like vegetable, steamed vegetables, and just really looking forward to that. But plenty of rice, plenty of grains, plenty of, uh, of lentils, of beans, of garbanzos, or chickpeas, and so you're hitting that macronutrient value, and it's very, very simple. One of the things that I learned in COVID when I went to a nutritionist and said, this is what I eat every single day, this is what it looks like, how can I improve? She said to me, you're about seven out of 10, and you can get to a nine out of 10 just by doing this. You're getting the right macronutrient values, but in order to get the right amino acid profile over your pro proteins, then you're, you're already having beans, but if you could just have three different types of beans and 400 grams per day, then you're hitting that as well. And that's giving you optimal. And so she got me to a nine or 10 just by literally making that little change. So it's the way you approach it. And as I've said before, it's like when you're shopping, if, you've got, if you're ravenous, if you're really, really hungry, and you go, that, go out there and go to the supermarket, everything looks amazing because it's meant to, because that's what marketing people are there for. But if you, if you have a, a good meal and go online shopping and get the things that you always get that serve you, whether it's performance sport or whether it's just focus in your work, then you can't go off the rails as much. And so it, having the right things and eating the right things and making it simple as possible, for me, keeps me on track and keeps me understanding that, okay, this is a fix. So it's not a variable, there's not a lot changes. And so if I see performance go up or if I see performance go down, when I check back to see, okay, what's gone off the rails, it's usually not diet. And it's really important for me to be able to monitor progress, analyze performance, and move forward in the right way by doing that.